This is the reading for day 216 of the year 2022, August 4, 2022. I'm reading from the New Living Translation of the Chronological One-Year Reading Bible. Today's scripture is from the book of 2 Chronicles, 2 Kings, and Jeremiah. 2 Chronicles, chapter 36, verses 1 to 4. Heading, Jehoahaz rules in Judah. Then the people of the land took Josiah's son, Jehoahaz, and made him the next king in Jerusalem. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. Then he was deposed by the king of Egypt, who demanded that Judah pay 7,500 pounds of silver and 75 pounds of gold as tribute. Heading Jehoiakim rules in Judah. The king of Egypt then installed Eliakim, the brother of Jehoahaz, as the next king of Judah in Jerusalem, and he changed Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim. Then Necho took Jehoahaz as prisoner to Egypt. 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 31 to 37, heading, Jehoahaz rules in Judah. Jehoahaz was 23 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem three months. His mother was Hamutel, the daughter of Jeremiah from Libna. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestors had done. Pharaoh Necho put Jehoahaz in prison at Riblah, in the land of Hamath, to prevent him from ruling in Jerusalem. He also demanded that Judah pay 7,500 pounds of silver and 75 pounds of gold as tribute. Heading Jehoiakim rules in Judah. Pharaoh Necho then installed Eliakim, another of Josiah's sons, to reign in place of his father, and he changed Eliakim's name to Jehoiakim. Jehoahaz was taken to Egypt as a prisoner where he died. In order to get the silver and gold demanded as tribute by Pharaoh Necho, Jehoiakim collected a tax from the people of Judah, requiring them to pay in proportion to their wealth. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 11 years. His mother was Zebida, the daughter of Pediah from Ruma. He did what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestors had done. Second Chronicles chapter 36, verse 5. Jehoiakim was 25 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem 11 years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord his God. Jeremiah chapter 26, starting at verse 1, heading, Jeremiah's escape from death. This message came to Jeremiah from the Lord early in the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah. This is what the Lord says, Stand in the courtyard in front of the temple of the Lord and make an announcement to the people who have come there to worship from all over Judah. Give them my entire message. Include every word. Perhaps they will listen and turn from their evil ways. Then I will change my mind about the disaster I am ready to pour out on them because of their sins. Say to them, this is what the Lord says, If you will not listen to me and obey my word I have given you, and if you will not listen to my servants, the prophets, for I sent them again and again to warn you, but you would not listen to them, then I will destroy this temple as a destroyed Shiloh, the place where the tabernacle was located. And I will make Jerusalem an object of cursing in every nation on earth. The priests and prophets and all the people listened to Jeremiah as he spoke in front of the Lord's temple. But when Jeremiah had finished his message saying everything the Lord had told him to say, the priests and prophets and all the people at the temple mobbed him. Kill him, they shouted. What right do you have to prophesy in the Lord's name that this temple will be destroyed like Shiloh? What do you mean, saying that Jerusalem will be destroyed and left with no inhabitants? And all the people threatened him as he stood in front of the temple. When the officials of Judah heard what was happening, they rushed over from the palace and sat down at the new gate of the temple to hold court. The priests and prophets presented their accusations to the officials and the people. This man should die, they said. You have heard with your own ears what a traitor he is, for he has prophesied against the city. Then Jeremiah spoke to the officials and the people in his own defense. The Lord sent me to prophesy against this temple and this city, he said. The Lord gave me every word that I have spoken. 
But if you stop your sinning and begin to obey the Lord your God, he will change his mind about this disaster that he has announced against you. As for me, I am in your hands. Do with me you, as you think best. But if you kill me, rest assured that you will be killing an innocent man. The responsibility for such a deed will lie on you, on this city, and on every person living in it. For it is absolutely true that the Lord sent me to speak every word you have heard. Then the officials and the people said to the priests and prophets, This man does not deserve death sentence, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. Then some of the wise old men stood and spoke to all the people assembled there. They said, Remember when Micah of Morsheth prophesied during the reign of King Hezekiah of Judah. He told the people of Judah, This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says, Mount Zion will be plowed like an open field. Jerusalem will be reduced to ruins. A thicket will grow on the heights where the temple now stands. But did King Hezekiah and the people kill him for saying this? No! They turned from their sins and worshipped the Lord. They begged him for mercy. Then the Lord changed his mind about the terrible disaster he had pronounced against them. So we were about to do ourselves great harm. At this time, Uriah, the son of Shemaiah, from kiriath Jerem was also prophesying for the Lord, and he predicted the same terrible disaster against the city and nation as Jeremiah did. When King Jehoiakim and the army officers and officials heard what he was saying, the king sent someone to kill him. But Uriah heard about the plan and escaped in fear to Egypt. Then King Jehoiakim sent Elnathan, son of Akbar, to Egypt, along with several other men, to capture Uriah. They took him prisoner and brought him back to King Jehoiakim. The king then killed Uriah with a sword and had him buried in an unmarked grave. Nevertheless, Ahikam, son of Shaphan, stood up for Jeremiah and persuaded the court not to turn him over to the mob to be killed. 2 Kings chapter 24, verses 1-4 to During Jehoiakim's reign, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon invaded the land of Judah. Jehoiakim surrendered and paid him tribute for three years, but then rebelled. Then the Lord sent bands of Babylonian, Aramean, Moabite, and Ammonite raiders against Judah to destroy it, just as the Lord had promised through his prophets. These disasters happened to Judah because of the Lord's command. He had decided to banish Judah from his presence because of the many sins of Manasseh, who had filled Jerusalem with innocent blood. The Lord would not forgive this. Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 1 to 14. Heading 70 Years of Captivity. This message for all the people of Judah came to Jeremiah from the Lord during the fourth year of Jehoiakim's reign over Judah. This was the year when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon began his reign. Jeremiah the prophet said to all the people in Judah and Jerusalem, For the past 23 years, from the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, until now, the Lord has been giving me his messages. I have faithfully passed them on to you, but you have not listened. Again and again the Lord has sent you his servants, the prophets, but you have not listened or even paid attention. Each time the message was this, Turn from the evil road you are traveling and from the evil things you are doing. Only then will I let you live in this land that the Lord gave to you and your ancestors forever. Do not provoke my anger by worshiping idols you made with your own hands then I will not harm you. But you would not listen to me, says the Lord. You made me furious by worshipping idols you made with your own hands, bringing on yourselves all the disasters you now suffer. And now the Lord of Heaven's army says, Because you have not listened to me, I will gather together all the armies of the north under King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, whom I have appointed as my deputy. I will bring them all against this land and its people, and against the surrounding nations. I will completely destroy you and make you an object of horror and contempt and ruin forever. I will take away your happy singing and laughter. The joyful voices of bridegrooms and brides will no longer be heard. Your millstones will fall silent and the lights in your homes will go out. This entire land will become a desolate wasteland. Israel and her neighboring lands will serve the king of Babylon for 70 years. Then after the seventy years of captivity are over, I will punish the king of Babylon and his people for their sins, says the Lord. 
I will make the country of the Babylonians a wasteland forever. I will bring upon them all the terrors I have promised in this book, all the penalties announced by Jeremiah against the nations. Many nations and great kings will enslave the Babylonians, just as they enslaved my people. I will punish them in proportion to the suffering they caused my people. That is the reading for day 216 of the year 2022. God bless each and every one of you, and may God be with you until we meet again.